Hey everyone, welcome back to the new video. I hope you all are doing well. And in this video, we are going to talk about a bug that you should check for when you come across feedback functionality. We often see this feature, or you can also call it a review feature where you can submit your reviews or feedback. So there are a few ways you can test it for vulnerabilities and we are going to explore it. So first, to explain this, I'm going to demonstrate you with a lab and then we are going to look at some reports as well. But of course, I'm going to give you real insights, not just solving a lab. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so over here, you can see that we have a customer feedback feature. And here you can type a comment, give it a rating, and then solve the caption, and then you're good to go. You know what? I have my burp suite running over here, and I'm going to capture the feedback request, so I'm going to turn on my intercept. Okay, so let's write a comment. Nice product. And let's give it a rating of 4. And then we have this capture, which is going to be 900. Why they're using mats for capture, man? I don't like it. I don't like mats. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, capture the request. Okay, so we have the request in burp. So you can see it's a post request and we have the API endpoint slash API slash feedbacks. And then we have a few uh, values over here. Capture ID, capture comment, and rating. Now, let's send this to repeater and send the request just to see how this normally behaves. In the response, we get 201 created and then we also get uh, status success and the ID. So this is the ID of the feedback we just submitted or the rating updated created at. And then we see another field or you can call it body parameter user ID. So this is interesting. We don't know about this field. We didn't see it in the request body but we are seeing this in the response does it ring any bells well it does ring a bell mass assignment yes we can test for mass assignment here to which we can test if we can submit feedback on behalf of another user so this will come under the category of broken access control but technically it's called a mass assignment vulnerability so how you can test this in this case, what happens is, let's say uh, you have two accounts. So basically, when you are bug hunting, what you are going to do, you are going to create two accounts. This is very necessary to test broken access control bugs. Create two accounts, let's call account A and then account B. Now, while exploring the application, looking at all the requests and responses, you realize that, okay, there is something called user ID and your own user ID is 1234. You are definitely going to see that. Okay, because usually fields come across whether in the request or in the response, you will come across different kinds of fields. For example, in this case, we are looking at different fields such as ID, comment, rating, and user ID. Now, I'm not going to say that user ID only comes in this response. I'm pretty sure in the whole OS Juicesoft application, there has to be more features where you can come across user id in the request body as well so let's say you have explored that much you found user id and you found out that your user id is 1234 now that's the user id of user a now let's say user b has user id of 4567 okay now how are you going to test from mass assignment in this case all you can do is include another body field let's call it user id because we see user id over here it has to be exact same as what you see okay and then you're going to provide it a value now the user id of your account b is four five six seven now keep in mind that this request is from user a account and this is the jwt token of user a account okay so this is how you basically test for mass assignment uh, you can send the request and if you get a success response just like this 201 created it means you have found a bug and you can definitely report it it's a very impactful bug so in this case we are going to just type one because this is a simple application and i believe there has to be some user with user id one let's send the request and in the response we are getting 201 created and okay we see user id 1 over here it means this user id actually exists and we were able to create or submit a feedback for user id 1 whoever he or she is so the thing is if this was not vulnerable you would get 403 forbidden or 401 unauthorized but we are not getting that it means it's a bug now if you want to see it in real life like 
a real report for this one i can show you this report okay so back in my browser it also says that i've solved the challenge anyways let's paste this okay so this one was reported to hacker one itself idor on hacker one feedback review okay so a bug hunting buddy and a close friend of mine from parrotsec who is ph ambassador okay the Okay, so this one is his friend and another friend. I used a Jong account to submit test reports to Parsec program. PHS closed my test report, then I asked him to review me and give him some instruction to perform an IDOR. PHS clicked the review button and put the below necessary info selected friendliness radio button public feedback. Jabs is awesome. Private feedback. Thanks for your report. Submit the report. Capture the request. This is the request. Okay. Post request. Hacker reviews. You will see parameters with its values. Hacker username. Report ID. Positive true. Behavior friendly. Private feedback. Thanks for your report and everything. The vulnerable param is the hacker username. Change the value to victim's username. And forward the request. So... In this case, the IDOR is not a number, it's a username, okay. Many people forget that actually, they always think that, okay, IDOR is all about numbers. Jabs will receive an email notification regarding their view, but it should be Jong, uh, should be the one to receive it. So, the request was from John, Jong account, but by changing the hacker username from Jong to Jabs, uh, Jabs was able to receive the notification in his email and his email contained a notification of private feedback. Uh, this is pretty old interface of Hacker One though, but yeah, as you can see, it's 2017, man. But the thing is, it's kind of similar. As you can see, this bug was reported in the feedback feature. So yeah, being able to see other people's private reviews or feedbacks, uh, is also a bug sometimes there's a case like uh, you can see the feedback submitted by everyone through some endpoint that should be only available to admin i think that is uh, available in the osu shop as well now another thing i want to mention when you are testing feedback is uh, you can also test for xss now there are two cases first is um stored xss of course if your feedback is getting stored and if you can see the public feedbacks of everyone test for stored xss but if you cannot see the feedback let's say the feedback just gets submitted uh and only admins can see it in that case you can test for blind xss now i have also created a dedicated video on blind xss literally start to finish in simple language i think you should definitely watch it okay so that's it for this video we just wanted to give you a quick idea of how you can test for these things hope you learned something new and enjoyed watching it let me know your thoughts in the comment section thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one